Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Bonbosher, and today I want to show you how to make some dirty, steezy, vocoded drum loops using the BV-512 Vocoder and Reason. The track that you just heard was something I made for this tutorial real quick, but I want to show you how to make those vocoded drum loops from scratch, so let's get started. I do have a new project already created, and I did not copy and paste the notes from the previous project over to here, just because I want to slightly explain what's going on and why we need a couple of note lanes to make what we want here. In my new project I do have a new combinator already created so just right click in your rack and create your combinator. And in the combinator right click and let's create an instance of Dr. Octorex. Uh, but you can use any instrument you like for the uh, modulation aspect of the vocoder. It is completely up to you. There are no right or wrong answers. Make sure to click the arrow here to show the menu and right click on it and reset the device or initialize patch. Next, make sure to deactivate the enable loop playback so that way when we actually copy the loop to the track it won't have phasing issues since it's not playing on top of itself. And in the first box here, click browse and I'm going to use a factory sound called tripats here. Um, and if you want to find that particular loop, it's under the factory sounds and the Dr. Uh, Dr. Rex drum loops. It's going to be under house and the tribe hats will be right here. And but um, I thoroughly recommend you experiment with everything when it comes to this particular technique. OK, now next thing we're going to do is right click in the combinator. We're going to hold shift and we're going to create an instance of our vocoder in the effects. So BV-512 digital vocoder. Since we held shift we have essentially negated any routing automatically and it will be uh, connected to anything. So I'm going to click the main output of the Dr. Octorex and drag it off so it's disconnected to the combinator. And real quick, I just want to briefly explain what the vocoder does in this application. Um, you can always use it as an equalizer unit, uh, but we're going to use it to its full effect with the modulator and carrier. Uh, the modulator is the mold, um, the, the sound that's molding the carrier sound. Uh, the carrier is the raw material that's being molded by the modulator. And so we're going to use the drum loop to modulate the carrier. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to route the main output to the modulator and you can use drum loops, vocals, anything really. Uh, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the vocoder's output. I'm going to route the vocoder output to the external routing of the combinator. So when we actually uh, create another synth, we're going to um, have an actual output and we'll actually hear something. So again, I'm just going to enable loop playback, and if I played it out, this is what we have. As you can hear, absolutely nothing. But you can see it being a spectrometer here. So if you need to find some notes that are being troublesome, you can use this to try to EQ. It's, it's very versatile. OK, now we're going to right click in our combinator again. We're going to hold shift. And we're going to create an instance of Thor. But you can use any instrument you like for the carrier. It is completely up to you. Click to show the programmer. Right click and reset the device. And I'm going to use a factory preset for this patch as well. I'm going to use a Thor polysynth. And it's going to be called Go Prids on these saws. An homage to Eric Prids. Uh, very steezy pad, so we're going to use that. Now again, if I played it out, since there is no notes for the carrier yet, you're not going to hear anything. So we're going to go to our carrier, aka Thor. We're going to right click and we're going to create a track for it. As you can see, it's put down here. Now I'm going to paste the notes from the previous project over to here. And then I'm going to go back to my rack real quick. I'm also going to copy the loop to the track here, the actual drum loop. And that way it'll create two separate note lanes. One for the whoops. One for the drum loop and one for the synth itself. So this is what we have when I play it out without any sort of um, messing around with parameters. 
nothing again. And that's because of the fact that it's not completely routed yet. Technically, the carrier's output isn't anywhere yet, so you have to make sure to manually route the carrier here, Thor's audio output to the carrier. Now, since the output of the vocoder is set to the combinator, we'll actually hear something. And as you can hear, what's happening is this drum loop is modulating the carrier's sounds and its chords. And I can make these chords longer, shorter, whatever I like. It all depends on what you want to do. So let's go back to our rack real quick. And this is where it gets fun because you can essentially use any of these parameters to, at your disposal. I really like the bands because it basically makes the sound more detailed since it splits it up into higher bands of frequencies or you can do lower brand bands of frequencies, like four bands, and make it some lo-fi steeziness. So let's keep it at four, and we're going to go to the shift here. The shift is basically just like the shift on a Maelstrom. It dictates the format characteristics of the sound. Um, the higher you go, the higher pitch sound you'll hear, but it's not technically um, messing with the pitch. It's just uh, increasing the frequency, essentially. And if you lower it, you'll hear a lower frequency, almost like a filter somewhat. Somewhat. Uh, the high frequency emphasis here is essentially um, exactly what it says. The higher you put it up, um, the more of the higher frequencies of the carrier you'll, you'll hear. And it's always good to use carriers that are rich in harmonic con content, aka with you know a good representation of higher frequencies. Um, the dry wet is exactly what it says. It's um, how much the vocoder is affecting the drum loop. If I turn it down to 64 and we do half and half, this is what we have. So you can hear the actual drum loop underneath the vocoder and you can mix it and match anything any way you like. And so I'll keep the dry wet all the way up. The attack and decay is an envelope that essentially dictates um, how long it takes the vocoder to represent itself and how long it stays around. So if we turn up the decay and up the attack a bit we can get some really cool sounds. but it can also get really loud as well, so just be very careful on that. Now, um, the hold it will actually hold a specific moment in the vocoder's time frame, and it'll still play out the notes, but it'll hold that specific format characteristic. So watch, and listen. And it can get very loud, so I'm sorry if uh, that kind of pierced anybody's ears. But um, that's just what it can do if you decide to. Um, you can really mess with that any way you like. So um, that's it. That's uh, how you make some vocoded drum loops. Um, it's, a, it's a fun creative technique to really add on top of drum loops or, you know, put on top of different drum loops or, you know, whatever you like. Um, so I definitely recommend messing around with it. I'm not going to save the patch just because it's more customizable than anything. So as long as you follow the directions, you should be good to go. But um, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I really do appreciate it. And if you have any comments, feedback, concern, uh, please let me know. And tell me if, uh, you, know, if you did anything better, if, if you made anything cooler. Um, I love to hear your stuff, so please keep sending me stuff. Um, but that's it. And um, thank you so much for watching again. And... Uh, We'll see you next time.